We're back, people, and today we're breaking on film on the Miami Dolphins defense versus the Patriots, and this game was just like the battle of the third downs. It felt like every new set of downs, it really just came down to could they convert on third down or not. They weren't picking up first downs a lot on first or second down. Third downs, early on, Dolphins ran a lot of cover one, and we're just giving up these first downs on this first drive, uh, getting a lot of penalties. They just get overly physical, and I think the biggest problem with the defense this season has just been the injuries to the secondary. The secondary is so important to the scheme, to the defense, with how much man-to-man -man they play, and guys like Keon Cross and Noah Igbenogane just aren't guys who should be playing on defense more than a couple of snaps, and that now they're playing significant snaps game after game, and if guys aren't running wide open, they're getting penalties usually, so it's just... Very unfortunate. I know Boyer gets a lot of blame, and I don't think Boyer has been great by any means. I think they're going to replace him, and he probably should happen. But <laughs> the injuries have not done him any favors, and the defense. Like, up front, they've been great versus the run, but so many injuries to the secondary has just killed this team. Dolphins running a lot of man-to-man -man early. They actually changed it up, went to some zone looks later on, especially on third downs. And I think that messed up the Patriots' offense because they were having trouble converting for a while there and then third downs became pretty 50 50 that first uh third down situation keon cross and just gets pass interference uh didn't really need to break it down too heavily there it wasn't anything too crazy he just grabbed onto him right here they get another big play this one's actually on second down right here specifically but this is a huge important play in the game uh they somehow get eric rowe lined up on taekwon thornton who's running a 4-2 and we have our safety lined up on him i don't know how this happened uh not a great look from the defense and he just gets blown off the ball row just gets caught flat-footed thorn runs you know a fucking four two blows by him and he just has the speed track over the top and this is very similar to the tyree kill uh catch by the dolphins on their first drive but they give it to thorn saying he got two feet in bounds just they couldn't overturn it um on the field even though that probably wasn't a catch he only got one foot in bounds but they just didn't have the conclusive evidence so just another unfortunate situation for this team third down situation on this drive this time kohu in the slot gets called for the holding um pretty tough position that he's put into here basically has to cover a two-way go he's probably in the like when you ask your corners to play cover one press man to man like this it's probably one of the hardest things to do in football like crossing i know he's been struggling but like look at him down at the bottom of the screen they just getting they like love teams love to attack him by putting in three by one put him with no help over the top safeties playing middle of the field and they probably could have thrown to him too they had a chance it wasn't in a terrible position kohu against jagobi myers who's probably their best receivers just gets slightly out of position when he gets into trail he knows he has the help over the top but once he gets to right here like it's very difficult because he has a two-way go he could break this way break across the middle with no help the only place he has help is deep over the top and he just gets caught hooking him and they get called for the holding um, and Holland could have had the pick. He'd end up dropping it, obviously, but it wouldn't have mattered just because of the defensive holding call. So just got to clean that up. Um, and But the real problem is just not having Howard, Byron Jones out there. You got to have top corners in this defense. And then they end up scoring a touchdown on a third down, just a miscommunication by the secondary. Uh, they motion over to a stacked look over here, and Rowe and Igbenogane just get caught up. They're trying to... Con to communicate he's trying to rose trying to tell iggy to get out to the receiver but then he just gets caught up on the tight end gets out too late and they get a free touchdown so just make miscommunication down in the red area it's happened a lot this season you can blame coaching for this too but uh also player execution i mean it's a coaching issue and it's just uh having players out there who don't know uh what they're doing who just aren't very good at the same time you know and People running open, probably could have thrown it to a couple other spots too. In tough spots is what happens when you play man-to-man. -man. If you go cover one, cover zero type of looks, and you don't get pressure instantly, I mean, guys are going to come open pretty quickly. It's pretty easy to beat man-to-man -man coverage like this at one spot of the field. Plays like this are why I was getting into a lot of third down situations. Like right here is second and five, and Dolphins show a heavy pressure look. They think they have the numbers out here. Basically a three on three. They think they can get the blocks and the receiver can make one guy miss. But Kohu just blows this up. This is one area where Kohu's been very good all year is versus screens. Just recognizing this. They go into their cover zero look, which they've been running less and less as the season's gone on. Just because of the injuries. And then Kohu slips underneath the block, makes the tackle. Kohu has still been a bright spot for this team. I've seen people saying he hasn't been playing well. I think 
he's had some up and down games like the Packers games. He started out very slow, but then turned it around making some big time plays. And while, you know, I think every corner on this team is getting beat week after week, Kohu is one of the guys that still is making plays, even though there will be reps where he gets beat, while the other corners are just mostly getting beat. Besides Howard, Howard will is very up and down as well. He'll make some plays and get beat. That's just his play style, though. Then after that big play, it becomes a third down, and Eric Rowe was struggling in this game. He just looks like he's lost a step. Like, like last year, a couple years back, he was kind of became like this tight end eraser, was locking down tight ends week after week and then here against hunter henry he just gets routed up he allows henry to get this inside release and get over the top and he just stacks him right here it gives himself a two-way go when you're in this position it's very tough for a db and Rowe just loses his balance so just playing with poor leverage maintenance as a db you get over the top and then mac jones delivers a good ball this is what they're trying to do row in this situation has got to maintain his low outside leverage knowing that he has help here to this side of the field over the middle of the field he has helped someone to break on this but if they break back to the corner this is basically the only way that this tight end will make this catch and the safety will be too late to the ball just based on the route so bro really just struggling there um just did not have a good game from him now first and 10 this next three play sequence is super weird they get the sack on first down you know working these twists these stunts this is pretty much the only way the dolphins defense gets these sacks now is off these twists these stunts um, and surprisingly enough, it's usually the guy that's crashing, not the guy that's looping. This guy, Wilkins, crashes down to take the center, and they have Raekwon loop around, and Raekwon gets pressure, but then a lot of the times when they try to switch this off, the guy who crashes just then comes free, and then they both meet at the quarterback. This time, Wilkins gets the sack, so really nice play call to scheme this up, and then you'll see what happens on the second and third down after this. And then after the big sack, second and 19, they just run the ball, pretty basic outside zone concept, and Stevenson gets 18 yards. For some reason, the Dolphins are... Love giving up these like first, second, and 19 runs, like getting 18 yards somehow. Like they're in a good, like they stayed in a defense, like their basic defense here where they stopped the run a lot. You know, the Eagle front. Um, Christian Wilkins does a good job setting this edge, feeling this up, forcing this cutback lane, constricting this run lane. And Raekwon Davis here, Roberts isn't able to fail. He gets blocked. That's a pretty big issue. I mean, that's actually Baker, not Roberts. But Baker gets breached here, which is the biggest problem by this left guard. You can't. He takes him on, but gets isn't able to get off of this and then fill this gap. And Davis misses. McKinley, he makes McKinley miss. And then he picks up 18 yards. And then after this play, another interesting situation happens. From 1st and 10 to 2nd to 19 to 3rd and 1 to then a big sack on 3rd and 1. Dolphins bring pressure right up the middle. This is a, one of those situations. They try to go play action. I think Dolphins were just bringing the blitz up the middle if it was a run to have robert stop this but as soon as he keys that it's past their pass blocking he just shoots the scab beats the running back and this is how they're definitely going to get pressure is by uh just getting those blitzes unblocked is pretty much their only shot because uh they didn't have bradley chubb in this game either and chubb i know people have saying he's been terrible he hasn't been terrible he's been creating pressure and usually when they do get sacks just bringing forward it's him creating pressure and then phillips cleaning up but they didn't have him in this game. Patriots still lines pretty good. So they got to create, you know, manufacture these pressure by bringing five guys. And it's just a good play call there and good execution from Atlanta Roberts. In 12, Dolphins decide to go into a cover three uh, buzz look. And this kind of, you know, changed what the Patriots, like they changed it up. They're running a lot of cover one, like I showed earlier on, on those like third and long situations, third and mediums. This time third and long, they just drop into cover three robber. Um, and this, the defense just plays it a lot better. They go four verticals, basically, and then the, the guy on the single side runs a comeback, probably an alert just based on the defense. Usually when this backside guy can either run a vertical, but once he sees the deep corner, um, he can probably just run a comeback. But they just play this pretty well, and once they see him dump it off, they all maintain their, their depth, and then he dumps it off to Stevenson, and it's just a bad throw. They would have come up and probably made the tackle anyways. So just much better work by the defense giving Mac Jones a different look, forcing him to check it down right away and then coming down to make the tackle if it was completed. Time at third and one situation. And honestly, I feel like more comfortable when the Dolphins are facing a third and or fourth and one than I do if they were facing like a third and five situation. Just, you know, they're most likely going to run it and the Dolphins run defense is just so much better. And then like third and five, it's just, it's a passing situation, but it's also not like super long you think they're gonna pick it up just third and one i just feel way more confident in this defensive line making a stop 
This time is a very good play from Raekwon up front. Knows he just fills his gap. Everyone constricts this run lane. He just gets control at the point of attack with this center. He once he gets control, he extends, uh, gets control of this gap right here, the A gap. Roberts comes in to fill. Um, he knows this running back can't attack outside here where most of the space is just because of Davis's leverage. So he just tries to hit up the middle and everyone just constricts on it. Davis comes off to the other side of the block, just perfectly playing like that one and a half gap scheme right there. So really good work up front from the defensive line. That's just where their their main strength is. Another third down stop. Dolphins defense definitely became a lot better at this after that first drive. Um, they start giving up some later on, but for a while they started winning these third down situations, giving the offense a chance. I don't think like overall the defense is just, it's very weird because they didn't give a lot of points in this game, but I just feel like the Patriots offense is so bad. The Dolphins defense was struggling to get off the field. They just, be, they're just very inconsistent. That's the problem. It's not like they're, they haven't been giving up a ton of points recently, even though they've still given up the second most points in the AFC. They actually do go back to cover one in this look, so I like that they like mixed it up. And this time they just try to attack over the, the top. Once Mac Jones sees Verone McKinley come down to be like the robber over the middle of the field, he decides to just go one on one to Aguilar. And Crossin does a better job of just staying in phase. The only way he gets beat here is by a perfect throw. I'd rather have him just play like that, not get over aggressive, not hold on, not get PI, force to, you know, force the quarterback to make a perfect throw instead to get the completion. Because if you PI him anyways, they're still gonna, you know, pick up the big gain. And then they give up a big play on third down, going back to cover three. This is why the Dolphins do not run a ton of zone. This is actually a misplay from Javon Holland being in the middle of the field safety. This is a good play for Mac Jones. Got to give him some credit. He played pretty solid in this game. It wasn't amazing. He played pretty solid. Just manipulates Holland with his eyes, making it think he's going to attack right here to this side of the field. And he just comes back to it, attacks the seam to Tyquan Thornton. He take, comes out of position, and then he's too late to recover. So just a good play from Mac Jones and Thornton to find this soft spot in the zone in cover three. I mean, the linebacker, maybe Baker could have gained some more depth to make this, so, you know, float the throw a little more, but it's not really on him. It's just more on Holland uh, for coming out of position. Now, third and 11, Dolphins do get a stop here. I think they end up getting a field goal after this, but they do hold them to a uh, short of the first down sticks. Uh, good play. Just going to cover one, robber again. I'm surprised he threw it to Hunter Henry knowing that they had the robber over the middle of the field. I think this is a misread by Jones. I think he wanted to take this deep shot, but this time something different they do did this time is they had McKinley lined up on this hash pre-snap, go to the middle of the field, and knowing that they were going to attack vertically against Keon Crossin, they had Cross uh, McKinley cheat to this side of the field to take this over the top so Jones doesn't throw it, so he comes off it instantly doesn't know where the robber is and then throws it down to Hunter Henry where Holland is there to just make a quick tackle. He probably should have gone to the bunch of the field. If he's reading this side of the field early, he probably should have thrown this whip route right here to Jacoby Myers just because I think there was a bit of a miscommunication between the DBs and then Kohu was slightly out of position. Even though if he does throw this right here, Kohu probably still is able to tackle him short of the sticks. Probably wouldn't have been the same situation. But yeah, just I like the mix up with the middle of the field safety cheating over the top to help cross in. Another third down situation, another one where the Dolphins win. Like they really turn this around after uh, after that really bad start on third down. They get some pressure here from McKinley. They go cover zero. They bring all the pressure up the middle and then Wilkins ends up being the one that drops. So giving them a different look, not going cover one. McKinley comes right up the middle, forces this throw away from Mac Jones basically to throw it up. Igbenogane does a good job staying in position under like this is a good rep from Igbenogane he's lined up and pressed they're all lined up and pressed they have to understand the situation they're bringing cover zero you know that this ball is probably going to come out quickly and you don't want to just um let them go over the top you know seeing this on the back side of three by one and all game back side of three by one they've just been going vertical Igbenogane knows this opens up early and he actually gets his head around which is surprising he usually doesn't get his head around and almost gets the interception on the underthrow Another third and five situation. This time they go different. They get Jacoby Myers in the backfield and then hit them with the fade over the top. Basically a wheel route out of the backfield. Um, Kohu not expecting it from the slot. Gets out into the flat. He kind of gets picked here a little bit too. Gets caught flat footed and then Myers just runs right past him. And then McKinley I think is supposed to help over the top and is also not able to get there. So they basically had him bracketed 
Kohu to the outside, McKinley playing with some inside leverage, and Myers is still able to get over the top and get open somehow when he's basically being doubled. So very unfortunate, but it was just a good play call getting him aligned in the backfield, um, attacking in between that bracket, not a, uh, just attacking downfield, putting both players in a tougher position. This was probably the biggest play in the game for the defense, third and five again in crossing. Basically how it started with a defensive pass interference. The ball is so underthrown by Mac Jones and they just get the PI because of it. Um, it's just a part of the game and how it is. You know, they under a lot of times underthrows are actually pretty big for QBs to get these defensive pass interferences. This is third and five. If they get the stop here, they hold them to a field goal and the Dolphins are uh, only down two points. So they would have had a chance to win the game if they hold this to a field goal right here. But they end up getting a touchdown later in the drive. Crossin basically tackles Jacoby Myers. Um, just he really struggles to play the ball once it's in the air. We can see it from the other angle. Just not his strength. Uh, it's it's also very tough if you ever played corner to get your head turned around. You always feel like you're just gonna miss the ball once you turn it around. And this is as clear pi as it gets. Last play, I'm gonna break down the final touchdown, which actually happened to be on third and one. And this one is just disappointing because. Uh, there's no play on film of it because it was a timeout, but literally right before this, there was a timeout. They came out in like this pretty much exact look, and Jacoby Myers was also aligned with no one in front of him. And then a timeout was called, and the defense came out and didn't line up with anyone in front of him again. And then Riley notices it, points at him, he's like, guys, no DBs on Jacoby Myers, and then they get a free touchdown. So literally there was a play before this, they called a timeout exact same situation no one lined up in front of Myers they come back out no one's lined up in front of Myers again and then he gets a touchdown so just really bad like not a good look from coaching not a look good look from players either like um, I don't know whose fault this would be on the defense I would just blame the coaching for this you got to have your players in the correct position and then honestly also becomes close to being not a catch just because he slams down with that ball and it moves a little bit but Myers has strong hands and makes the catch for the finish. So pretty fitting that this game basically ended how it started, you know, with the Keon Crossin pass interference. That's how it started on the first third down. And then after that, uh, the final touchdown was a third down conversion. It was just a very interesting day for both sides of the Patriots offense and the Dolphins defense. Defense. Didn't play the worst game I've seen them play. It wasn't the best game either. They didn't give up a ton of points. But just because you're not giving up a ton of points against a bad offense doesn't mean you played that good overall. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like a super inspiring day from the defense. They really got to step up next week versus the Jets because they're on a downward spiral. That offense has been struggling in recent weeks. And they really, really got to kick it up if they want to have a chance of making playoffs because the defense is going to have to carry with Skylar Thompson in at quarterback. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.